So far so good. Keep it on the planks and I think it'll roll nice. Welcome back everybody. Let's do some assembly today. I have all the fasteners, the studs, the plug bolt, the washer, everything put back into the intermediate cover. And I did also use some thread sealer on these because they are not blind holes. They go all the way through the backside just to ensure we don't have any unnecessary oil seep happening. Uh, hardware here for the intermediate cover. There's the gasket we made in the last episode and the only block prep I had to do was install this stud right here. It is one of those that will eventually have a nut on it and hold the water pump. So pretty simple. Let's get going. Before I bolt this up I'm going to treat the gasket with a little bit of uh, sealer. And I'm going to show it to you guys because I know a bunch of you can ask about it and instead of having to type that out 15 different times I'll just show you right now. Motorcraft RTV silicone sealant for use on the 7.3 diesel engine. It is the TA31 Motorcraft part number. Um, I've used this quite a bit of work and uh, it's done very well in some pretty harsh environments. Um, it is very good at coping with crankcase vapors that would otherwise degrade a lesser silicone in short order. And even though I've done everything I've been done everything within my power to make sure that we have flat, um, clean gasket surfaces here that ought to seal on a gasket just fine on their own. You have to remember this stuff is 70, 80 years old. A lot has happened in that time. Um, you know, it's seen a lot of uh, cold to hot to cold uh, transitions. You know, it's just something that I always give the gasket a little bit of help on these old machines. Um, some guys will flame you for it. A lot of guys say, oh, I never use silicone. And as long as you have good gaskets and good surfaces, you're fine. Put it together dry. Well, my experience with this old stuff has been a lot of times it needs a little bit of help. So we'll just get a little bit of a layer on there. And you have to be very mindful of how much you're applying. Because remember, any amount of squeeze out is waste. It's doing you absolutely no good at all. On the outside, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just hanging out there in space. On the inside, it's waiting to dry up, fall off, and plug up a coolant passage or an oil passage or get into a filter or a pump, and it's, that can lead to all kinds of other troubles. So I just put a very, very thin layer on everything just as a supplement. Um, my goal is to not even have enough on here to see any squeeze out. And that usually works pretty well for me. Silicone sealers are kind of another topic where everybody has their own favorite brand, special flavor, all this other stuff. And it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like talking about which uh, engine oil you prefer to use in these old machines. Um, I usually I've had that question asked of me a few times and I usually just shy away from it and let it go because that's been one of the most divisive topics on the forums is which is the quote-unquote right oil and what is the quote-unquote wrong oil. Um, let's just say a consensus has never been reached. Um, you'll have one guy that says, I only ever run this brand and this weight. Anything else will ruin your engine. The second guy will chime in and be like, nope, that stuff is the worst stuff you could absolutely ever use. I only ever run this brand and I put this kind of additive in it. And then the third guy will come in and he's like, you're both wrong. I only ever use blah, 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 and then they'll argue about it, <laughs> you know, and bottom line, more engines have been destroyed by having no oil or low oil or dirty oil in them than have ever been destroyed by having the quote unquote wrong oil. You know, you can ask these guys, all right, you ever known anybody that's ever blown up an engine by using the wrong oil? Crickets. That's pretty much what you get. Then you ask them, do you, have you ever known anyone? that has blown up an engine by having no oil in it. And somebody will be like, yeah, I had a buddy that knocked a hole in his oil pan on the stump out in the woods and it only ran for about a minute and quit turning. Well, there you go. Would he, would he have been better off having, having the quote unquote wrong oil in there? Well, yeah, probably still would have been running to this day. Better than no oil. There's your answer. That's, <laughs> that's where I am with it. So I usually don't get into 
specifics of what I prefer to run, what I use, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, I'll run what helps me sleep at night. You run what helps you sleep at night and everything will be just fine. Anyway, now that I've got my rant out of the way, kind of went off on a tangent. That's about all I'm going to do for this. I don't really need complete coverage, but we have critical area here on an oil passage, critical area there, run a coolant passage, and the rest of the coating is just to help it bond to the block a little better. And I've already done the other side. That's why it's sticking so well to the front cover. It hasn't moved around at all. Okay, time for the fit up. Like I said in the last video, this thing weighs about 42 pounds. It is a substantial piece of cast iron. I think I'll fit these uh, bolts that have the pre-bent locks on them first. Just apply a little bit of tension to those. Fitting this longer bolt now that goes down here in the center, um, I think I'm going to position the fold down portion of the lock along this flat edge. That's how the old one was put on. And normally when you're positioning these, you want to be mindful of counterclockwise rotation of a bolt loosening up. And in a perfect world, you would put the fold down portion of the lock like on this side, hard up against an abutment that would ensure that it cannot rotate counterclockwise at all. But in this scenario, it is such a nice flat edge right here with such a pronounced corner. If I put the fold down portion of the lock against that, there's no way it can overcome that and start rotating out. So that's how I will position this one. These final two bolts here that go in these corners, I am going to position those locks so that they will be hard up against the intermediate cover to prevent any counterclockwise rotation at all. So we'll bend this tab down along here and we'll take this tab and bend it up along this upper edge here. That way, let me run this in real quick. That way, when this lock is bent over here, it cannot rotate counterclockwise at all because it's hard up against that. And then when this lock is bent down flat here, of course, it cannot counterclockwise rotate at all because it is hard up against this edge right here. So off camera, I tightened all the bolts, folded all the locks. That's now a permanent assembly. I'll explain what I did there, but first we'll refresh ourselves with the manual here. It has a pretty good breakdown of the right and wrong ways to fold those flat locks. Um, right way, nice sharp bends, and you want to align it with one of the flats along the side of the bolt or the nut. If it does not line up in a perfect world scenario like that, you can take it out to a 45, that's just fine. Uh, just do not try to fold it up onto more than one flat of the fastener at one time. You don't get nice sharp bends that way and it is not sufficient to hold those things in position. So, like this one ended up just about perfect right there. Nice flat bend. Uh, this one's a little bit angled, but you know, it's acceptable. Nice sharp bend. We're only hitting one of the flats. This one's pretty darn good. This one is angled a bit more. And here was a true 45 one, and that's actually the hardest bend to pull off without distorting it or making it look really ugly. I know we're not going for aesthetics here, but I do kind of like to uh, have them all nice and sharp, straight, flat, what have you. That one came in pretty good too. So we have the cover fully tightened in and installed. There are a couple bolts with regular lock washers here and here that I got put in. Uh, Cat only really does fold over locks. On fasteners that are buried, hidden, they cannot be uh, easily uh, visually inspected from the outside. Um, and as long as we had this stud in here for the water pump, 
Uh, I also put a 3 8 nut and washer there just to put a little more clamp load on that cover, kind of seat that thing into the gasket a little better. So we're beginning to take shape and it's starting to look a little different. Um, we're going to move on to probably camshaft next and then uh, the rest of the timing drive components. Hoping things should go a little bit quicker from here on out. I know we spent a lot of time on what is here up to this point, but there was a lot of a lot of messing around to do to make sure that was as right as we could possibly get it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, tune in again, like I say, camshaft's going in next. Um, rest of those components that were under the front cover from 1113 were pretty good. We've already verified cam bearing clearance in one of the prior videos. I can't remember which one now, but I got, I got a playlist for 1113 here. You can go back, look through all those if you want to refresh your memory on that. I think it was the final block inspection. I decided not to replace those bearings because everything was basically a brand new spec yet. Anyway, we've been there, done that already. So uh, tune in again, guys. I'm going to start cleaning on that cam. We'll start throwing that in. Hopefully start covering some ground a lot quicker than we have been.